challenges faced the United States in the early 20th century, including global economic competition. National and local leaders realized that a more skilled workforce was key to the country's continued economic strength, a need that called for dramatic increase in college attendance. Yet three quarters of high school graduates were choosing not to further their education, in part because they were reluctant to leave home for a distant college. During the same period, the country's rapidly growing public high schools were seeking new ways to serve their communities. Combination of these traditions emerged the earliest community colleges. The private and public sector united in their commitment to meet local needs. The typical early community college was small, rarely enrolling more than 150 students. It nevertheless offered a program of solid academics as well as a variety of student activities. Here in 2006, we celebrate the 40th anniversary of Columbia Green Community College, located in the heart of the scenic and historic Hudson Valley. We are less than one hour south of Albany and two hours north of Manhattan. The campus is located literally within the shadows of Olana, home of the great artist Frederick Church, which Church described as being at the center of the world. Today, Columbia Green is the only post-secondary educational institution in either Columbia or Green counties. In the 19th century, our predecessor colleges were located in Ashland in Green County and in Claverick in Columbia. One of the college's greatest assets is its small size. We serve about 1,800 full and part-time students. In May of 2006, the graduating class was 286, and yet the college has grown by leaps and bounds from where it started. One of the original trustees, Charles Shattenkirk, talks about the very beginnings of the college. The first germs, or seeds if you want to call it, were, uh, were planted in the 40s uh, when the, in a report to Governor Dewey uh, concerning education in general and, and the need for more educational facilities uh, to serve the population's growth that was expected after World War II, uh, particularly vocational for the veterans. Uh, and uh, that evolved it took a while to evolve, and it basically, uh, it was in the early 1960s that uh, there was an organization, or a club, if you want to call it that, in uh, Columbia County called the, the, um, the Columbia County Industrial uh, Management Club, uh, which was been set up by Bonnie Brennan uh, and Jim Salerno way back when, and the purpose of it was to uh, get things going in Columbia County. Uh, and a uh, number of things actually came out of that group. One was the college. Uh, another was uh, county planning. And the third was the airport. Uh, the, uh, the group was, oh, it wasn't, it wasn't a publicly appointed one, but it included a uh, a supervisor representative, uh, Ed Post from Taconic, uh, who was very enthusiastic about you know, these things. He, uh, and he carried the message to the Board of Supervisors. And the supervisors uh, decided to study the college, and they appointed uh, Sylvester Walker 
from the town of Canaan, who's still alive now, he's 92, and still alert, uh, and he uh, was the chairman of the committee, uh, and he basically was the one that uh, we worked with. Uh, I had the, uh, the good fortune at the same time of working in the state uh, division of the budget uh, in capital planning unit, and uh, it was uh, uh, part of my responsibilities was community colleges uh, and the formation of them. Think about Columbia Green. What was Columbia Green going to look like? What was Columbia Green going to accomplish? Well, it was going to provide an opportunity for a continuing education in a local area. And that was uh, what uh, I agreed to join because I was sold on that kind of a concept of a, a local college where students could commute get the first two years of their education in an economic way and build on their education from there. We also had the uh, fact that there were 80 to 90,000 people in the two counties without a uh, higher uh, educational institution above high school. And we thought there was a necessity for that. And we thought it would be a boon for economic development. And uh, we're all, we, Jack and I were both in industry, and we knew the, the importance of training young people to come in and serve in industry. And if that can be done locally, it's great. Formal approval of the charter creating Columbia Green Community College was made by the New York State Board of Regents on September 22nd, 1966. The next step uh, to be accomplished would be the appointment of a board of trustees and the first board of trustees met at the Greene County Courthouse on November 30th, 1967 and uh, Columbia Green Community College opened its doors for the first time in Athens uh, in September of 1969. Columbia Green find you, how did that work? from an ad in the newspaper. They put an ad in that they were looking for faculty. And um, I applied. I did not think I was going to get the job because I had a master's degree. But I went for an interview, and sure enough, I got a job in English, and I was thrilled to death. And the, this ad was where? In the Register Star. So you, you live in, in? Hudson. In, I lived in Hudson at the time. Yes, okay. and I was teaching in Germantown at the time. OK. But I thought maybe it was time to move up. So I applied for the job, went for an interview with the then president, Ed Owen, and the then dean, John Walter. And I came home and I thought, you know, maybe I had a chance. And sure enough, I did. And it was wonderful. That's what I got the job in summer 69. And we went to work in September 69. How does that feel like going to a brand new college the first was, day? Uh, well, actually, it felt like going to a kindergarten class uh, because it was a brand new college, but it was a very old abandoned elementary school. And everything was sort of scaled down to size, if you know what I mean. Even the bathrooms were scaled down to size. For little, for little, little people. people. Yeah, and it was really <laughs> old abandoned elementary school. Well, if you look at the college now, look where we are, and I'm very proud of that. We did that. Did, that you, was, did you feel like uh, this was an experiment and, and it might not work, or what, how did well, it feel? that's a strange question, because 
I remember in those early days in Athens when we had registration. Oh, it was like praying every morning, praying, please let a few students come for registration. Because, <laughs> no, it's, 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 it's serious. Seven students in a class. We can't let a class go until it's got 10 or 11 or 12 students. And every time a body walked in the door, oh, thank the Lord, there's somebody coming in. <laughs> and, you know, many, many classes in those days were canceled because we didn't have enough students and classes had to be collapsed into each other. But I never felt it was an experiment. I always felt in my heart it was going to work. What attracted you about coming to teach? You were just fresh out of school. What was the attraction about coming to teach at a brand new college in its very first year? Well, it was interesting. We didn't have much equipment, and there are some funny stories about that situation. And uh, we, it was just the freedom to do what you could, whatever you needed to do to be a quality institution. And it was that freedom, I think, at it that attracted me. It certainly wasn't a salary. It certainly wasn't a lot of other things. I mean, I had job offers in industry which were more than twice what I was started here, but I thought the freedom and the, and I was a little bit daredevil anyhow, so why not? <laughs> and you think today, looking back, that you made the right move? Oh, definitely, no doubt about it. This, this was a grand place to start, even though the floorboards were up. <laughs> weren't even attached to the uh, uh, steps of a new, new campus. Uh, tell me about the, um, was it a physics class in the bar, one of the bars in Athens? <laughs> How did that uh, happen? Well, we didn't have much equipment. Matter of fact, we had almost no equipment, and it was the second year of operation. And they decided to teach a university physics class, and uh, I decided I was going to make it worth the student's time because I had been in engineering physics before. I was a chemical engineering university master at Ohio State University in undergraduate school. And so uh, I decided to uh, develop this physics course, which is vector algebra approached, and we had to make up our equipment. You know, we did things like attach a wire to a string with a bowling ball on it and use it as a harmonic oscillator. We, uh, one of the labs was, uh, we wanted to study vec vector approach to solving momentum problems and solving physics problems. So we went up to the local bar and uh, I took the class up there and nobody objected. Nobody said anything about it at first. I walked into the bar. <laughs> At first. <laughs> I walked into the bar, and they didn't charge us to use a pool table, so we shot pool, and I'd ask questions of the students about action, reaction forces, and um, momentum, and questions about angle deflection, and, and, you know, very solid physics questions about pool. And nobody believed we could even do that. And the funny thing is, it, w it was a great... Uh, it was really a great uh, experience for the kids. And I remember the students kind of laughed, and I laughed, and, and we came back. And when you know, I believe a parent called the dean <laughs> had a question about Dr. Drum going up to the uh, bar with students. What's this having class up there? We're down in the basement level. No, here. no, no. This is the faculty office. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Exactly. And my desk goes right here. Right here. Did you bang your head on this? <laughs> no, I was never that. Well, I, I was taller a few years ago, but not, not that though. Doc Drum had some problems right, down here. Exactly. Yeah, Doc had some, but he was over on the stage. Yeah. 
You were on the stage. Yeah, I was on the stage with him too. <laughs> and, and we're, we're you were on the stage. Yeah, I was on the stage. Wow. I've always been on the stage. I should have guessed that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'll have to see if I can find it. I might have it. Somewhere. Now, did you? There were a good twelve or fifteen of us down here. Yeah, it was we were just all crowded. We even had. I think we social had social sciences. We're down. I mean, uh, who the heck was business? Was Joe it? Tyrell, Gene Altman. Yeah, Altman's down here. Altman was down here. Uh, uh, Levine. Who is the social science guy? Not I think we had some English people down here too. Wasn't Reinsdorf down here? I Walter? think so. Walter was down what here. What about uh, who else was down here? Did you have a secretary, a, a faculty secretary? I don't remember that. I don't remember. I, mean, no, I don't know don't what we so. did. To uh, not here. Did they if, give if you a did, filing? There might, there might have been one over on the stage because there was no room for it. Filing <laughs> cabinets? Did you have uh, filing cabinets? Or? Must have. Must have had a filing. Probably sheer. Everybody got a saw. Sure. <laughs> 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 uh, those were the good old days. Yeah, I remember this. It hasn't changed. No. I mean, we've got a few shelves here that need to go, but we could come back here and teach. <laughs> now, you haven't been here in 30-something years. That's correct. Is that the same for I, you? I haven't been in this building since we moved out. I told yeah, you. I haven't been back in. I don't think. Nope. How's it feel? It, it, there's, it's uh, very similar to what it was as, you know, as far as the layout goes. As Dick says, it's just a few additional shelves and things. But otherwise, it's I recognize everything so far. <laughs> Should we go through the boiler room to get to Wait, the, the I don't stage? know if we can do, I don't know if we can get through. Yeah, yeah. we go right over here. All right. The I was over here somewhere. I, I remember because I had those next to windows, and I see the windows are all blacked off. Oh, there. <laughs> but I actually did have some natural light coming in. Blackboard, yeah, blackboard. Yeah, but I don't think we ever used the blackboard. Uh, but I do remember I kept score for the basketball team. You, you were the uh, advisor to the karate club. Yes, I forgot all about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. Is this where you had karate? Uh, we actually, we did. Yeah, we had some uh, dem karate demonstrations, and uh, one of the students was very good at karate, so he was basically teaching it. I was just their advisor. So, okay. And then I was also advisor for the photography club. And down under the stage, it's, I told you the dark room that we, we made out of a men's room. I mean, Below the stage. Yeah, I don't know if we want to go down there or not, but you got to go out and down the stairs there. Oh, oh, well, we forgot about that. Down How many people were in your karate club? Yeah, it doesn't. No. Really? Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, karate. <laughs> My first year here, spring of 71, I coached the men's softball team. We had a men, we, we yep. didn't have baseball. Did no. Doc do it the first year? I don't know. Doc? But I know I did it after you. Oh, you <laughs> I was after you. Yeah. And then eventually we got the baseball. We were too small to have a uh, a, a baseball team. Yeah. So so we had a, we went around and played some of the other smaller mm -hmm. uh, colleges that had softball yeah, teams. I remember going to Fort Montgomery and getting our pants beat off and. Uh, you know every 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 other team had uniforms or new <laughs> shirts and hats. We were just looking like this. You know we went. Some of them had baseball caps. Others did not. But you know, we had a good time. Yeah. Uh, this building here originally went. Now, when you when you went to school here, this was what went to eighth grade, sixth, sixth, and then you went to you went middle seventh school. Seventh and eighth. We didn't have a middle middle school concept at the Ju been junior born. high. Right down up in Cooksaki. Went to seventh and eighth grade up there. I subsequently went to St. Pat's in Catskill. Okay, which was really nice. I think it's something that the fact that the college was here. Not only did I have an opportunity to go to school here then subsequently went to Kuksaki in 7th and 8th grade. Went to high school in Catskill. Well, then coming to Columbia Green here, you really had a great opportunity to meet a whole lot of different people. You know, it wasn't limited to, you know, the people from Athens, the people from Kuksaki, you met people from Catskill, and the, obviously St. Pat's at the time drew from the mountaintop and Ulster County and things. And then the college came, and that drew from all over the place, you know. And there were people, there were students here from other parts of New York State. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no question about it. I mean, it's some very interesting people. I actually went to school here where I went to, uh, I, my English class was uh, where I went to kindergarten. You could walk to school. I did. I walked to school. Not only did I walk to school when I went to elementary school, I walked to school when I went to college, you know? Actually, that house was a, 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 a that little house right over there. Yeah. That was a <clears throat> like our little frat house. <laughs> this house here? Yeah. What did you do in the frat house? Uh, you know, we you read. Fraternized. Yeah, we read and uh, <laughs> enjoyed drinking coffee and things. <laughs>
<laughs> you studied over there. We did. We yeah. did. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, one of the things I would also in the the cemetery behind us, Mount Hope Cemetery, Greta Kimball, I don't know if you know her. No. She was a professor. I don't, she still may be associated with Columbia Green. She taught creative writing or something. Well, we used to stand, spend a lot of our time in class over in the cemetery to whatever, you know. Yeah. I'm not much of a creative writer, but... Uh, contemplate. You yeah, that was it. That'd be it. That'd you be contemplated. It. Contemplate it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did a lot of classes in the gym. That was like our auditorium, you know. That's where you went for... It's like our answer to the egg was down here at the auditorium. Now, who owned this frat house over here? Actually, she was a student here whose parents bought the house. Her first name was Sue. I never asked her her last name. And uh, how did you get in? Was there a secret handshake? No, no, nothing that? like that. It was just it was convenient. You know, we just all hung out. and. Right. We have to imagine there was nothing in Athens growing up, right, except for all the, the little things that you would do. The college came, it was a great opportunity, you know. Then we suddenly had the Athens Hotel, which I think you might be familiar with. Right. We had the sweet shop, we had TDs, we had a pizza shop. What's t TDs? TDs was like another sweet shop kind of place, coffee shop. Where you know, was that? Right on 2nd Street, in what used to be the old corner shop, which really wasn't on the corner, but now is a dance studio. Um, what else? What, what? All the apartments in Athens, you couldn't get an apartment in Athens, all the students lived there. You know? It was pretty interesting, like there used to be clotheslines that went across Main Street. If one lived on one side, the other just ran their little notes across the top, you know. It was just... I think we heard that before. Yeah. 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 Um, what did the old people, or the older, you know, residents of Athens uh, think about the college being a college town? Oh, I think that... They didn't have a problem with it at all. I think it was a boom, not, you know, economically, culturally, everything, you know. It was just a lot of people on the streets walked around, which really was very similar to what the people in this community were used to, you know, before you had a lot of cars and things. People had to walk on the streets, and there was always something going on, you know, Main Street. You know. How about the bell? Somebody told me about the bell. Uh, were you involved in that? Somebody. I only rang that bell when I was in sixth grade. Okay, but some students tried to steal the bell or make off I, with I, the that bell. That could very well be an urban legend. <laughs> Infamous bell. The bell came right down. Crash. Crash through that hole in the ceiling. There. Didn't, didn't somebody steal it? Though? The students. The students stole students it. tried to steal it, and it, it, instead, that's what they did. It fell through because they. It cracked. Yeah, it was too heavy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And now that bell lives on the daycare center at Columbia oh, okay. Green that's Community College. Yeah. It's the same bell. I was going to ask yeah. you where it went. No. Oh, it's well, um, one of the uh, Green County legislators uh, uh, retrieved it for us when they were no uh, fixing up this oh, building, and we something. installed it in the daycare that's center. That's great. That's great. I don't know. I don't know if the statute of limitations is worn out. <laughs> has expired on everything I've done. Yeah. You grew up in Athens. I grew up in Athens. You probably went to school in that building? I in an went to school, school in the elementary oh. building. <laughs> yes. So it sort of was very sentimental, you know. Went to grade school there. There was no middle school back then, so you went through all the grades there until you went to high school. And uh, it was neat. It was so you neat. had college classes in some rooms that mm -hmm. you had? I had K through 6 in. It brought people to life. It, there was excitement in the town, you know, people walking up and down the street, going in the sweet shop, going down to the Athens Hotel for a beer or two, I guess, you know, whatever, lunch with Mr. Garbez and his favorite, you know, homemade food. And it just, you know, it brought some excitement to the town. Whereas now it's just sort of like quiet, quiet. You know, it, it, it was full of life. And I think it, I think a lot of the older people enjoyed it too. You know, not just the younger people, and um, there was a lot of memories of the older people talking to the younger generation, and there was sort of a mingling where they all mingled in, you know. It worked. It worked. It was sad to see them leave Athens, the college. Just all shot. The students had better cars. Students used to live in these houses over here, okay? Because they came in. We used to, we had the first 
Actually, we were the one of three community colleges in the state of New York that had an agreement, a transfer articulation agreement with um, uh, uh, the SUNY College of Forestry. Okay, so we were one of the three out of the 30 community colleges. That meant that students from Long Island, New York City, New Jersey used to flock here because they thought the country was great and was closer, you know, to the city. Um, so they would come here. We had a very large body of um, students from that, from New York City area. They would live all through, especially in these houses right here. However, these doors in the summer were always open. Always open because it used to be hot in there. There was no air conditioning. Okay? There's no such thing as air conditioning. These trees weren't as big as these are now, so we didn't have the, the sun would beat on these windows and we would just have these fans rolling to keep us cool. So these, these doors were always open, which meant that we had neighborhood pets come in. We had two dogs that hung out with us for years and years and years. One was a St. Bernard and one was a beagle, a hound. And they would come in and they'd walk in here and they'd hang out on the steps and they'd walk into the classrooms while teachers were teaching. They'd come into the admissions office. People, the students would feed them. It was so incredibly friendly. But um, these doors were always open in the summer. I remember that. Yes. I remember that. Uh, I worked for uh, Frank Capozzi for three years. Then I was offered a position to work for the president of the college, who was the first president of the college, and that was Ed Owen. So I went upstairs. I got promoted and I went upstairs. And I worked for Ed Owen um, up until the time that we moved over to the new building. It might, might have been four or five years. I can't remember. Around that time. I worked for him. And um, I mean, when, when the, the board of trustees got together, when the county supervisors and legislators got together, there was a lot of meetings that went on uh, because they told us they wanted to build a bigger building to, to house more students, to make it look more like a community college. And we kind of, working for the president, this plan started to be put in action. They hired an architect, that Gene Burns, who worked with the president, and they started to work with the two counties. And, and I remember one thing, and that was there was such d uh, intense discussion over, is it going to be in Greene County? Is it going to be in Columbia County? And they kept going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. But there was discussion about it, and that was, it started with the Board of Trustees talking about it, you know, and getting a bigger campus. Um, keep in mind, we wanted to grow, and this particular building wasn't going to house that. We had, our student body was like 200 students. That was it, 200. So, and again, maybe 50% of them were from New York City, you know, because they have that forestry program. So they were talking about, okay, we're going to get bigger, more programs. Um, we, couldn't, we couldn't be here. It, was, it would be just too tight for us. And this was temporary. This was a very temporary situation. Columbia Green Community College held its very first commencement at Catskill High School on June 16th, 1971, with a graduating class of 36 graduates. At that point, preparations uh, had already been started for the eventual uh, construction of the new campus in Greenport. All the necessary land was acquired, uh, including the former Conway Farm, which is the uh, location of the actual uh, buildings here uh, at the college, and the um, uh, the new campus, the new Greenport campus, opened uh, for the first time in September 1974. Uh, where it was going to be. Uh, there was a great deal of discussion about where it was going to be. Uh, Columbia County or Green County. I suggested we either hang it off the bridge or uh, put it on a barge in the river, <laughs> but uh, that didn't go over too well. <laughs> and the. Uh, <coughs> Uh, and that's <coughs> about the same time, as far as location was concerned, uh, Columbia County was uh, getting involved actually in, in Ulana. Uh, the, uh, Sam Aldrich had been involved in the uh, in pushing for the acquisition of Ulana, and the, uh, uh, it was a substantial, it was up for sale, and uh, uh, 
a lot of money it could be collected, over half a million dollars. And, uh, but it wasn't sufficient to the sale, so they went to the state. Uh, and at that time, uh, the state, state legislature had just recently become democratic for the first time in umpteen years. And uh, the Speaker of the Assembly, Stanley Steingart, said that uh, uh, we must have a public purpose for this. He didn't agree with it. And so it was, uh, the language was added, which said that the college would be at Ulana. Uh, and uh, this was satisfactory uh, with the people from Greene County. It was just over the bridge. In some ways, it was closer to Greene County uh, than it was to Columbia County. Uh, but as time went on, uh, the people from who, who became the trustees of Ulana uh, did not want a college on the site. Uh, they interviewed with the view shed. <laughs> and uh, technically speaking, there was not a sufficient room uh, to have a college and expand in the future. Uh, that time I, I moved in the state and I was uh, a planning supervisor with the State University Construction Fund. So I knew a lot more about campus planning at that point. And they were right. Uh, but the question was, where was, who was going to get the land and where was it going to be? Uh, I remember, I think a few of us, Jim Salerno, myself, and a few others, had to take a trip down to Rockefeller Center uh, to meet with the, uh, one of the, some of the representatives of the Ulana Trust which was headed by another Rockefeller. And uh, uh, after some discussion, they agreed to uh, uh, purchase the land adjacent to Uwana, uh, and uh, which is where we are today. Uh, that was quite a discussion that day. Uh, uh, but anyway, it... Uh, so the Olana Trust purchased well, what I, I call the Conway Farm, right? That's yeah, where we are now. This right. is the Conway Farm. Right, right. That was bought by Olana? Well, the money was provided by Olana. Okay. But it was uh, uh, the counties had to purchase it. Right, okay. Uh, uh, okay. The, the, uh, and the counties actually, uh, I, I'm not, uh, yeah, the counties purchased it. Uh, and... Uh, it was not the most desirable site, site structurally, you know, from geologically and so forth. Uh, it's got a share of rocks in it, uh, and the. Uh, but anyway, that became the college site, and I remember uh, <coughs> Roger Herdman, who was the chairman of the Green County Legislature, uh, was quite pleased that it was that close, you know, to them. Uh, anyway, that that pretty much. Uh, or set the, the college site. There were other issues relating to it, no water, sewer, and so forth, which might have involved the town of Greenport. Uh, but Greenport wasn't too interested in, uh, in uh, participating in it. And so we went all alone, basically. And then we needed more land. So we had to buy more land adjacent to it. Uh, and I think up to Middle Road, whatever. Anyway, the... Uh, then as the college went on, the, we, uh, we had to hire a president. So we started the search committee. Uh, the, uh, the first president was Ed Owen. Uh, and he, he did an excellent job of uh, setting up the initial programs, uh, <coughs> hiring faculty, many of whom were still working here. You know, 10, some are still working here. And you were first hired as uh, instructor in biology. Yeah. Um, my first year, and we actually had classes in dendrology with only three people in the class in those years. But because we had an articulation agreement with, with uh, Syracuse College of Environmental Science and Forestry, and so we had to make sure the dendrology course was taught, even though there was only a small enrollment. I, I looked at the yearbooks, and, and, and it's, it's uh, striking to me at how young the faculty was. Uh, the, fact, the, the students must have almost felt like colleagues. 
Oh, yeah, many of the students were older than me. In fact, Ed Owens, <laughs> in my first class, Ed Owens' wife, Ed Owens was the president of the college. His wife was in my class. Talk about being stressed out. <laughs> <laughs> I was so nervous that, well, I don't drink coffee, I was, but I was so nervous that when I went to lecture, I took a um, thermos of coffee with me just so that when I was too scared to think of anything to say, I could pour myself a cup of coffee pr <laughs> and pretend like I was just drinking coffee. I was, I was trying to get my mind on something to say next. I came to the college in 1974, and I was hired as a consultant by Paul Montana, who went on to be uh, the founder of the Columbia Green Community Foundation, our, our scholarship and uh, fundraising wing of the institution. Paul hired me to come up and uh, get the place ready, at least part of the place ready, for a transition to the new campus. I actually worked in Athens in 1974, uh, to, to help put together a uh, program for uh, individuals who were returning from the military. Uh, we had at one time about 150 or 160 uh, veterans who were taking advantage of the GI Bill. This was just post the Vietnam War, so there were, there were many, many veterans in the area who were using the GI Bill to acquire higher education. And my job was to come in and set up the programs for the veterans and also to uh, begin building a more sophisticated and uh, extensive financial aid program uh, for the students who would be attending the college. I think at that stage of the game, everyone knew that when the college moved to the new campus in Greenport, that there would be an expansion in the number of students who would be attending. And that was proven to be true. So. Uh, many of the systems that were uh, had worked so well for many years while well, the school was small and um, weren't going to work uh, as the campus grew larger and with the population increased. So I was hired to come in and set up some of those programs. Uh, Ed Owen um, made me an offer, uh, asked if I would like to come on board full time. And uh, I had to think about it a little bit because I really enjoyed Dutchess Community College. I'm an alum, alumni of Dutchess. I had spent a couple of years working there in the financial aid office, and I lived in Hyde Park at the time. And uh, I said, yeah, I think I'd like to be part of uh, this brand new, so to speak, community college that was, that was poised to uh, uh, become a, uh, uh, a major force in the SUNY community college system. It's it's important for the two counties to have a vehicle for uh, young people to uh, further their education and what better place to do it than in the area that they know. Um, it certainly is a, uh, an economic benefit and uh, when kids go on to a four-year institution, their diploma does not note that they spent two years at Columbia Green. Their bachelor's or degree will be from the four-year institution and so from that standpoint it, it certainly makes sense um, but it's a good it's a good institution I think that uh, one of the things that I've been most proud of is the uh, the achievement of our students when they go on and we get periodic reports from from SUNY telling us how our graduates do um, as, as they enter a four-year institution in the third year and our students um, Excel. Um, being in the business community, I am acutely aware of the need for um, educated people with specific skills. And the, the community college, uh, we've really tried to place ourselves in position to help businesses, uh, to attract businesses who wouldn't normally locate here, um, and to keep businesses from leaving because of a workforce issue. Um, our, our nursing grads do amazingly well and have pretty much a 100% placement rate. There's a high demand for them. It is very difficult to get in the program, um, as well as our technology grads um, who do very well when they leave here. It's, it's important for me being also a, a parent to be able to look to the future and hope that my children will be able to continue and raise their children here and what will make that possible is attracting businesses that will keep, keep uh, them able to support their families.
I liked it so much that uh, I applied for, I had worked also as a student aide, and then I applied for a job here, and uh, it's just been one of the best things that happened in my life was to be able to join Columbia Green. And so I came over here, I said, well, okay, I have this interview, and I thought they were really pulling my leg on this. I really didn't believe them. And I pulled into the parking lot, and there was these junker cars all over the place, you know? And uh, I said, I looked up, and there was this half-made sign, Columbia Green Community College. Again, I thought it was like a joke. <laughs> so I walked in, and I remember going, you know, asking a student, and I saw the dog, asking a student, where's the admissions office? Is there admission? Oh, yeah, I think it's right over here. So I walked in, and, and I walked into the office, and there was this man swinging on the door. And he looks at me, and he goes, hey, is she for me? I said, that's who I'm being interviewed by? He was, and, he, and I interviewed with him, and we just hit it off. I said, this is for real. This is a really a community college. And then that's what I heard about. Well, we just started. There's great plans and great hopes for this. Uh, we're serving the two counties, and hey, you're in it with me, and you know, da, da, da. And from there on, I just made a partnership. It was great. So. Diane Kaney told me the other day after you stopped filming, she said that she was hired in the spring of '69, and they hired Cliff Wexler oh, yeah. at the same time to teach English. <laughs> and then they said to him, "By the way, we're going to need some painting done over the summer. <laughs> Can you do Can it? You do some painting." Yeah. So he was yeah. hired to teach English, yeah. Yeah. and then he was hired to paint oh, during I, the summer. Abs absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> If I come back in another life and the institution is still here, I will enroll. <laughs> <laughs>